After learning how to walk in the early years of life, most of us have been intrigued by the question of where we come from and the true story of the emergence of human life. Honestly, I was quite confused, and the mythical and religious stories I heard from my parents did not satisfy my curiosity until I discovered the scientific story of Lucy's life and the true story of human evolution. Please stay with us until the end of the video, as always. Many years ago, a fossil was discovered, estimated to be around 3 million years old. Most scientists believe it to be one of the most important fossils ever found. And they have named this fossil Lucy. It belongs to a category of animals called primates. And within the primate category, there is a species known as Australopithecus. Scientists say that the Lucy fossil represents the first step towards becoming human. All these early primates, as history indicates, lived in Africa. Different regions of the Earth apparently didn't show much difference three million years ago, but upon closer inspection, significant variations become apparent. If you look at the nature of Africa today, you'll see it teeming with various animals. Three million years ago, Africa was much the same, but many of the animals that once lived there have since become extinct. One of the most well-known extinct species is the saber-toothed cat. During the time Lucy lived, the most ferocious animal found in Africa was the crocodile. Food was abundant for crocodiles because all animals needed water, and these crocodiles were the rulers of the water, never going hungry. They would lie in wait in the water, ready to pounce on any animal that approached to drink. And Lucy was among these thirsty animals in search of water. Lucy's life was extremely challenging. She faced the constant danger of crocodile attacks when thirsty, encounters with saber-toothed cats while gathering fruit, and becoming prey for other birds during her hunting endeavors. In short, Lucy struggled greatly to find food. 90% of the fossils found belonging to Australopithecus, including those from the same era as Lucy, have shown signs of being killed. It is rare to find a fossil that hasn't suffered some form of injury. For instance, leopard tooth marks are found on their skulls. However, it is evident from most fossils of these creatures that they were killed by crocodiles, with discernible marks from crocodile teeth. The weather is hot and thirst puts pressure on animals, forcing them to drink water. However, drinking water without much caution means death, because crocodiles patiently wait for prey for hours until an animal comes to drink. Among the discovered fossils, one is particularly interesting, the fossilized skull of a three-year-old Australopithecus child. This child wasn't killed by crocodiles, nor by a tiger or leopard. Instead, marks on the skull suggest the powerful talons of a bird, possibly an eagle. Amidst the chaos of shattered skulls preyed upon by predators, only Lucy's skull remains unharmed, indicating a natural death. The fossils of Lucy and other Australopithecus individuals have shown scientists that these creatures gradually transitioned their lives from trees to the ground. This insight was gained by examining their shoulders, which are somewhere between human and ape in size. As you know, ape shoulders are powerful for swinging from trees. The shoulders of Australopithecus indicate a weakening because their bodies no longer require strong shoulders for climbing trees. As we mentioned, crocodiles were the biggest threat to Australopithecus, but we overlooked a very significant problem, their need to fill their stomachs. The teeth of these creatures indicate that they were herbivores, 
consuming plants, grass, leaves, fruits, and even roots. When scientists discovered that they also ate roots, it dawned on them that the Australopithecus had figured out that roots provided better sustenance. What's interesting is that even today, chimpanzees, gorillas, and other modern primates haven't evolved to the point where they recognize the nutritional value of roots and consume them. This suggests that Australopithecus separated from the lineage of modern monkeys a long time ago. No monkey, unlike Australopithecus, has ever decided to come down from the trees. In some parts of Africa, footprints of Australopithecus have been discovered, indicating that they walked on two legs and did not rely on their hands for movement. As mentioned before, Australopithecus had to sustain themselves with plant-based diets. Although they could eat meat, unfortunately they weren't powerful predators like crocodiles or tigers. If you observe modern monkeys, you'll see that they use tools, but not tools they have designed themselves. For example, if they need to break something, they use stones to accomplish the task a unique trait among monkeys. However, it's interesting to note that Australopithecus fashioned and sharpened stones, indicating a difference in their intelligence compared to monkeys, and their intelligence was evolving. The oldest carved stone found dates back to approximately 3 million and 300,000 years ago, almost the same era as Lucy's life. This suggests that Lucy's brain had undergone a transformation and she wanted to no longer be at the mercy of crocodiles and tigers. Australopithecus individuals were about one meter tall and with such short stature, they couldn't run quickly. Historical evidence shows that they began to consume meat. They would wait for other predators to make a kill, then wait for them to be satiated and leave so they could consume the leftovers. As you know, lions and tigers, like us, cannot eat all parts of the meat and leave the rest of the prey. Australopithecus, due to their hands and tool-making ability, understood that if they broke the bones, behind those bones there was a wealth of meat. They could eat all the meat and leave only the bones, leaving nothing for other scavengers. When you compare the skull of Lucy to that of a modern chimpanzee, you'll notice that Lucy's skull is somewhat larger. Chimpanzees are among the most intelligent primates but are incapable of tool making and the idea of consuming plant roots doesn't occur to them. Alongside a fossil found in a cave in South Africa, a stone was discovered estimated to be around 2,900,000 years old. Scientists are not entirely sure what this stone is, but they speculate that Australopithecus might have shaped it to resemble a face. It could be said that this is the world's first handmade sculpture by Australopithecus. The fossil of Lucy, the Australopithecus we introduced to you, was a female, and she had likely become a mother. Lucy's fossil indicates significant differences between her and a female chimpanzee. Chimpanzee females typically experience relatively easy childbirth, while Lucy had difficulties, and in many cases, such challenging childbirths led to the death of the infant or the mother. Another distinction Australopithecus had from gorillas and other monkeys was that unlike gorillas where a group could have only one male, Australopithecus did not face this issue and lived together as a community. They stayed with their families as a cohesive unit. When the skeleton of Lucy was examined, it showed that she died a natural death, but one of her bones was broken. She lived with that broken bone, indicating a form of resilience and adaptation. Another noteworthy distinction of Australopithecus was their response to the death of a group member. If one of their members was killed, they would become upset and mourn. 
a behavior that is quite rare among monkeys. This is not the end of our journey to understanding our origins, and we really want to know where we come from. So, this concludes the first part of the story of human evolution, and the next parts will be ready soon. Please subscribe to our channel to see the continuation of the videos. Thank you for sharing and being with us.